First come to earth, you got to take care of it. And then come the people, then each his fair share of it. Design for the earth and you design for yourself. Help design a world better for you and everybody else. Welcome to Seven Seeds Farm. I'm Don Tipping, and I've lived here for the past 12 years. We've been planting trees and building ponds and developing a permaculture intensive farm system here uh, ever since. So we're on the north slope of Sugarloaf Mountain. We're at 2,000 feet elevation here. We get about 40 inches of rain average a year. We're at 42 degrees north latitude. Uh, we have a seed company called Siskiyou Seeds that we sell seeds uh, really worldwide, but predominantly we're focusing on our bioregion of the Northwest. And then we also have a CSA that we run with a cooperative called the Siskiyou Sustainable Cooperative that we deliver food to about 200 families. One element of our water system has been the restore and rest, uh, you know, repairing the native waterway that's on the farm. This is Spring Creek and it's fed by three year-round springs up on this mountain at about 4,500 feet is where the springs emerge. And when we first moved here, uh, the stream flow would plunge a lot in the late summer, early fall, and uh, sometimes even go dry by the end of the day and then flow in the morning. So we built this pond here at kind of at the topmost portion that we could do on the land. So this represents the highest water storage that we have on the farm. So from here, I have enough gravity pressure to run about eight sprinklers. So our idea is to store water in our biggest pond that's about a thousand feet below me, pump it up here with a little solar powered pump, no battery, no inverter, just pumping when the sun's shining. So this is our, our storage tank. This represents how much water we can water with um, in one day. So I'm standing on a skid road that was here. It's probably built in the 50s when they had originally logged the land. And when we were doing some pond building, I realized that I could come in with a bulldozer and do what's called inwhaling. So water that's flowing down from this slope and from upstream is concentrated in the, the inside cut of the road and gets directed downstream into a pond. Here, we're up at the top pond and 17 feet deep, it's about 200 feet in diameter. And we're basically at the top of a five acre, very intensively planted permaculture landscape where we have about 400 fruit trees and about two acres of annual row crops. And then we also you know, maintain aquacultures, about five species of fish in here. So if you can imagine, there was a giant excavator scooping material out, a bulldozer spreading it across the dam, and then a roller, an 18,000 pound vibrating roller compacting it down. So this here is uh, <laughs> a wet dog. Uh, the spillway of the pond, so in a, like a catastrophic flood, the water will flow out this wide spillway that's about eight feet wide and go back to the creek. Um, and then we're actually you know, also filling it from the creek here from a gravity line, gravity water line. When there's plenty of water this time of year, plenty of water in the creek that we're filling the pond with, we can open a wooden gate and allow the water to flood down a ditch that then zigzags down through this five acre system. So I like to view the water system really as like the circulatory system of the farm. In a way, we're playing Aikido with water. We're trying to hold it as high in the land as possible. So here we are at the, the toe of the dam of our large irrigation pond. So I have a four inch valve here that I can open up for flooding and, um, and so this is water coming out of the pond and we obviously we have a screen on the other end to keep fish and newts from coming out. So as this water goes into this kind of shallow ditch, it'll fan out going both directions. And then we can block this water up using a, just a simple plastic dam to direct its flow where we want it to go. This will be a, like a poultry and sheep and goat food forest, all flood irrigated. 
So once again, with the key line system, the, this whole thing is called rapid flood flow irrigation, that we're rapidly applying a large amount of water to the land that then soaks in. So we don't have much evaporation, which means ultimately we're far more efficient than using overhead sprinklers, where a lot of the water is evaporating into the air before it reaches the soil. So what I'm standing in here isn't technically a swale, it'd be what we'd call a key line terrace, meaning that it has one feet of drop for a hundred feet of horizontal run, so the water moves through. So these trees work in concert with the earthworks to open up the soil for more porosity, for more water to be able to store in the soil. You know, long-term drought-proof this landscape, where normally you couldn't just grow an apple tree here without irrigation. This, this field is about three acres in a big rectangle of seven swales about every 50 feet. So when it rains and we get runoff, it fills into the swale and it forms a long skinny pond. And then we've planted trees on the uphill side that will open up the soil and work in conjunction with the earthworks to be able to store more water. And over time, the trees won't need any irrigation because they'll just be working off the stored water. All right, so here we are at the next pond down in the system. And that zigzagging key line terrace ditch system comes into this pond here and fill this pond up and then overflow on the other side of these willows here and go above the greenhouse through a, another key line terrace that has a slight drop and then it zigzags below the greenhouse and then below the dam of this pond. We've noticed more algae growth, more plant growth and uh, better fish yields in our aquaculture system here. So this is a, not only a, a sink for water, it's also a sink for fertility. So we're capturing any fertility before we lose it off the land. So as water spills out of that aquaculture pond, it comes down here and is moving this direction. And this is also an access road. Another thing I like to consider about this type of structure is that as frost moves down the landscape like molasses, that it's captured by these structures and possibly moved away from an intensive annual garden where we want to create a, a more protected microclimate. So this is a, another part of our system that's connected. Um, and when we were looking at that skid road that we had inwailed to use as a water catchment system, that water comes into this pond and then it goes into a valve that then fans out across this meadow. There's about four acres of land below here that I can flood irrigate from this pond. And then both of these systems go back into the woods into a seasonal drainage that only flows when we get significant rain. So again, we're doing that system of playing Aikido with water, of taking it from a low place on the land and trying to keep it as high in the land as possible. And one thing we have gotten feedback from that the people that were downstream of us, that their well productivity increased. And our neighbors that are using active wells have noticed that their wells produce longer into the summer. And one thing we've noticed, and in particular our downstream neighbors have noticed since we put in all the swales and ponds, is that the stream flow below us is much more regular and uh, much higher volume. We're mimicking the action of the beavers, of storing water and letting it infiltrate in more slowly, is, is having a positive influence on stabilizing the, uh, the peaks and lows of stream flow downstream from us and making it more steady. So what I like about these systems is long term, I visualize that I could walk away from here and come back 25 years later and that these trees would still be alive, even though it gets to be 100 degrees in August here, because the water is passively catching and releasing water and moving it down through the land. Without me opening any valves or anything, it's gonna do that. Instead of flowing downhill, it's stored here and it's gonna seep in. So that's happening every time it rains, every time we water, and it's holding water high in the landscape, which not only is benefiting our farm, but our neighbor's well productivity has gone up, the stream flow has gone up, and I imagine our water table is being replenished as well.